Welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's very quick and dirty video I'm going to show you how to absolutely 100% diagnose a bad wheel bearing so you can save time and money. So let's go! Alright so in the shop today we've got a 2004 Toyota Highlander and the customer is complaining that when they're driving down the road they have a weird noise. So whenever I hear that, especially if it's speed dependent, I always think bad wheel bearing. Now, the very first thing any good mechanic should do is go for a road test and try to replicate that problem, replicate that symptom, and then go from there. So that's what we're gonna do. Very first thing about trying to diagnose a wheel bearing, if it's bad, it's gonna make a ton of noise when you were driving down the road, and it is very speed dependent. So when you are going super slow, you might not hear it, and as you get faster, it'll sound like a whirring or a grinding or a rumbling noise, and it literally gets worse and worse and worse the faster you go. So let's go hop into the car and do that. Now that we have done a road test and we have a suspected bad wheel bearing, the very next thing you need to do is get the vehicle lifted up off the ground so the wheels are not touching. Now we're going to use our hoist in this shop, but if you're at home you can use a jack and jack stands, they work just fine. Now with the vehicle up off the ground, you're going to grab the left and right hand side of the wheel and give it a little shake. If there's any play or any kind of clunkiness, that's kind of one step further towards that is a bad wheel bearing. However, if there's play like that, you also need to check from the top and the bottom. Give it a little rock in and out. If there's play there, it's pretty much guaranteed a bad wheel bearing or the only other thing it could be is you actually have some loose wheel lug nuts. So check those before you start doing a wheel bearing. So I'm going to change the position of the camera so you can actually see the play because this one is bad and needs to be replaced. And I'll probably show you a good one after this so you can compare the two. And when you're checking wheel bearings, no play is what you're shooting for. However, there's various degrees of how badly worn out that bearing can be. So when it's really, really obvious, it's actually quite dangerous and you're gonna have a ton of play. It's, it's really quite obvious. And when it starts to get just kind of starting to have issues, that play is a little bit minor. So it is up to you to hear it. Now, I'm going to shake this. It's going to be very quiet. And I'll probably crank the audio in the video editing part of it so that you can actually hear the clunking a little bit. So that side to side's got play. And that's our up to down. So that is a bad wheel bearing. Now another final way to really confirm that this is a bad wheel bearing is remember that there is little ball bearings inside there that is supposed to make this thing absolutely frictionless and it should be really quiet with no play. So when this is spinning, the reason why it's making noise is because there's play, there's dirt, debris, there's damage inside that bearing and it's literally not rolling right and making noise. So although you heard it on the street, if it's really bad you can actually just manually spin it by hand and hear what that sounds like. So uh, once again, I'll be really quiet and I'll crank it up in the audio editing part of the video so you can actually hear this, but um, you're not listening for the light sanding scratching sound of the pads. What you're listening for is kind of like a tumbling rocks kind of growling sound and it gets faster the faster you can spin it. It's no good. Now, just to show you what a good wheel bearing should feel like and sound like, this is the right front wheel that we're going to do the same exact checks. So, left and right of the wheel, give it a good side to side. No sound, no play. If you actually hear a loud clunk, and it sounds like it's coming from up top, it's because your steering lock has engaged, so what you do is you put your key in the ignition, make sure the steering wheel is unlocked, and then recheck that, and you'll find that that big clunking sound from up top goes away, and it doesn't feel like you have a bad wheel bearing anymore. So, no play this way, up and down, no play, no sound, this should be a good wheel bearing. And to give you an idea of how it sounds, I'll spin this one up, there's no sound, except maybe some slight scratching from the pads. Good bearing. Remember, when you're also doing this left and right, but it isn't up and down, 
that's not wheel bearing and if it's the front it's your steering so you got to do this and start looking at your steering linkage which we'll save that for a future video now in this 2004 toyota highlander the rear wheel bearings are actually one of these guys which is called a wheel bearing hub assembly and you can't really fix them the bearings are all trapped inside so you have to replace this whole thing as a unit which sounds bad but from a fixing point of view it's actually a lot easier of a job so what I'm going to do is I have an old one here from an old Toyota Echo that is bad and I've actually got a brand new one still having to go into a vehicle so I can spin these and show you what they sound like. All right, there you go. There's another skill to add to your growing repertoire as an up and coming gearhead. So now you can diagnose your own wheel bearings and save yourself a ton of money and start getting that confidence level even higher to the point where you might want to tackle doing your own wheel bearings in the future. So if you have any questions or concerns about the video, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And hey, if I was able to help you out and diagnose your wheel bearing at home, give me a like and a sub. That would be much appreciated. Until next time, take it easy.